we spoke about it. We said maybe it's going to be another magical number. Seven. It is 7% again for the sixth consecutive time. I'm talking about the CBR. And the reason behind that, now wait for it, it is that the economy is on the path to recovery. As according to CBK, now let's talk about the numbers. 1.663 trillion loans were restructured in 2020. And now the ratio of non-performing loans rose to 14.1% in December. And inflation at its highest in the country. I mean, when you look at the cost of food in 2021, because that's where you need to check it from. By the end of the day, it is still 7%. The word that was used prior to that is that the macroeconomic indicators were pretty much neutral. And we do expect that probably in the second quarter of, um, the, the, let's say, the half of the year, that's according to CPK, that the economy is going to rebound. Now, there's that magical number that the Treasury is also working on when we look at that with the budget policy statement, 6.2%. Can we rebound? to 6.2%, are we being overly optimistic? We talk about this BR before we close this week. Fine. Let's look at Safaricom's service revenue. Um, so we talk about what it news they're giving us this morning. If you're a business person, good. Let's look at that data this morning before we put that story into proper perspective. Now, look at that fixed data. is at just a 3.6%, but look at M-Pesa, 33.6%. Um, voice that is uh, a going calls 34.5 percent that is for the financial year 2020 now they're saying that if you are a customer and i'm saying a business that has lipa nine pesa or the pay bill account they're going to auto generate invoices for you and send payment reminders and issue e-receipts quite a good move from Safaricom. Now, the service will be offered to all the businesses with Lipa na Mpesa. And this is normally through the pay bill or the till number. Good. And this, the same, is going to offer Mpesa customers a single point for viewing all outstanding bills. It's really good for smaller businesses in the country because we do know Mpesa also controls 99.9% of business to business transactions that are happening through mobile platforms in the country. Cost of food, good, we're still there. Let's talk about the graph that we all normally look at when it comes to talking about food prices in the country, maize or unga. All right, let's look at what imports in terms of value and quantity have been becoming have been coming into the country before we tell you exactly where that story is uh, emanating from and looking at that data let's analyze it good from 2015 all the way to 2019 you can actually say that our worst year and i will tell you why 2017 here I'm talking about this value because this is where the conversation is coming from this morning. Let's look at that from 2015 to 2019. You can actually see exactly where we are in terms of billions. Good. Let's cross over and look at the quantity as well, which is going to also show you a spike in 2017. Good. As we continue looking at that data in terms of tonnage, let's talk about why 2017 is really of a conversation point this morning now we do know that in 2017 that's when we had a spike of i would say unga price in the country because back then we were getting at around 105 for a two kilo packet all right now what the government did is that it taxed millers in the country to actually import maize into the country and they were supposed to pay them after they were done with that year because it sort of helped standardize the price of unga in the country. But it's turning out that they still owe them 2.3 billion, all right? That was all to millers, which has now accrued interest all the way to 2.7 
paid on shillings. So you and I have to go back to 2017 and also pay taxes that are going to be geared towards settling what the government did settle back in 2017. Now, even as that goes on, the politics and the political climate when it comes to maize importation in the country is quite known. We did see the biggest headline last year when the Ministry of Agriculture did cancel all the licenses for importation of maize into the country as they were trying to relook that area afresh and talk about exactly how it is they're going to manage the food prices in the country, especially when it comes to that commodity maize. This morning, we asked the question, how can we be self-sufficient? Are we able to take care of our food importation in to the our food production sorry into the country where are we with promises of the galana kulalu project which was supposed to make the country food secure what are the key performance indicators for the banking industry in 2020 let's look at that data this morning before we tell you exactly where it is that we're coming from because we don't have some of the data for you this morning in terms of 1.63 trillion worth of loans that were restructured as of December 2020 and the ratio of non-performing loans that rose to 14.1 percent. All right, let's look at that data in terms of total assets, gross deposit, gross loans, gross MPLs and profit before tax. Good. For us this morning, we'll actually look at um, total assets, fine, and then come and look at gross non-performing loans in the industry as we do know of it. Now, we do know that um, banks can actually look toward um, CBK and get cheap money, let's say, at an average of 13%. That's the, the CBK uh, lending rate to the banks. Now, they want CBK to lend the money but on a discrete basis. Why? They're saying that if you look at where we are from in the coronavirus pandemic, with this 1.63 trillion worth of loans that have been structured as of December 2020, and the ratio of non-performing loans rising to 14.1%, meaning that banks can actually look back to the CBK to give them some money so that they can cushion themselves from some of these adverse effects like what we've seen that has happened in the banking industry since March when we got into the coronavirus pandemic. But now they're saying that every time investors and customers get to learn that they're actually looking to the CBK for help, that sends a negative sentiment in terms of where the bank stands in terms of liquidity. Now, they are asking CBK that should they want to get more of this, then CBK has to do it discreetly. In quotes, meaning, give us money, but don't shout about it because you'll be chasing customers away from us, which has seen very few banks running to CBK for this money. All right, this week, we talk about that and ask ourselves the question, what sort of regulatory response are we going to expect from the regulator, that is CBK, and Governor Patrick Njoroge when it comes to actually protecting and cushioning the financial institutions in this country from the adverse effects like what we've seen, the coronavirus pandemic, which has seen massive provisioning and that non-PL, that is the NPL book, sorry, rise to 14.1%. Is that going to be any? 2021 is the local year.